Hi, I'm Daniel, and OK Curious Me Heroes were a Cartoon Network show that came out in 2017, almost five years ago. As it started airing a watchable half of season one, but yike when we were bears, Cartoon Network's airing made it hard to keep up. I really liked what I saw, and this year I watched through the whole show again, and it was great. It got significantly better as the seasons went on. There's a lot of extraordinary things here, like the premise being simply and complex simultaneously. More episodic stories entertaining and the overarching stuff is where the show shines. The characters are very good and likeable. There are multiple aspects worthy of intrigue, but today we're discussing the TKO storyline. Then you the turn it takes in the third and final season, because that is the best season. This show is really underrated and while it is a starting point, there is a lot more coming depending on how this video does. And spoilers for the show. This is my third 2010 Cartoon Network video in the second half of this month. I would say there'll be more variety December, but that's Christmas month. Season 1 is a simpler season, so yes, overarching plot, but it is a genius setup starting like this. In a very early episode, you'll have 100. There is a hint of an angry and aggressive side of KO coming out when fighting a giant Darrow. In Face Your Fears, we don't see Kao's favor in the room like Enid Van and Gar, but we do see a shadowy Kao appearing from his brain. We will become important later. The mid-season two-parter TKO shows shadowy figure unleashing a version of Kao that is powerful, dark and edgy. He is shown to retain a mild part of Kao, but is very different and ends up attacking the piazza. Kao has to take back control from TKO and lock him up in a cage. Throughout the rest of season 1, TKO and Shadowy figure get an occasional mention, so it's obvious it wasn't forgot about in the episodic storylines. In Mystery Science Fair 21X, Dendy decides to test if TKO can be unused for a project, and ends up being inconsiderate in the process. Which leads to TKO calling it out for this, and also showing her yab. At the end, KO agrees they should continue to study TKO, which leads into the finale you're in control. There is a big theme with controls around this character, which comes here in Season 3, but more on that later. This episode, Yord Boxman's secret project Boxmore Jr. attacks the Piazza, and even with Mr. Gar and Carol, it can't be defeated that easily. Because TKO can use turbo power, KO calls him for help, leading to action scenes where he goes intense. KO and TKO end up making a compromise when TKO isn't put in a cage anymore, and while both are very really happy with sharing it, it will have to do. They are on better terms now, and this combination finally makes them the other one. He should have got to that number sooner, and considering TKO's power, it should be higher, but Palkar Yeffo's aren't reliable. I wonder if in this universe there are your suits based on Palkar numbers. While Davos plot is easily the best part of your own control, the main plot is also very interesting. Now as for season 2, TKO is part of Kale's mind in the background with only one episode with him in a major role. TKO's house is about how TKO hates Shadowy figure because he doesn't want to exist like this. Which makes them try to find Shadowy. They end up being told that TKO is part of KO, which makes them feel better in his existence. But as shown later, they didn't properly take it in that they were the same. As shown by the rest of season 2 episodes, KO is powerful, with TKO and Cage, but they aren't fully united. This scene in the finale shows the unstableness, arguing whether they fight the mummy. But there isn't much conflict this season, next season however. So, TKO's real. This is mostly regular, with TKO trashing KO's house, but then the end happens. But we'll spend a young time on just the X on the scene, where KO made the choice to banish TKO in his subconscious. It seems very unlike what the audience would expect from him, but it makes some peace sense out of what just happened in the previous 10 minutes. TKO showed no regard for the house and what KO would have wanted, which makes KO keep in his head pointless because he hasn't changed. The cinematography in this scene is exceptional for how bright the gold elevator is, and how Kyo is in shadows most of the scene, except when he is talking. As a context, this scene is presented like Kyo is the villain, you could say it's one villain a scene. The use of elevators representing fear and no escape, making the scene sympathise with TKO. Anger is a secondary emotion, you can say tears before his scream, causing a very shocked and tense aftermath. The dramatic throw at the cookie that Carol just gave Kyo is icing on top of the cake. And there is no outro music, just a real elevator of audio that feels creepy. 
This cute atmosphere when it's only magic wouldn't have the same effect. Most of the episodes only okay, but this ending really means a lot, showing another cage for TKO in the most amazing way. Then we have the show's final episode, and Carl is where things start happening, which is shocking considering the title. First, I should probably discuss the big reveal of Venomous, that he was former hero Yazabias and Kyo's father. Not a super original plot twist, but it works in context. It was also revealed that Shadowy Figure is a spirit personality, similar to TKO, and I hate how they weren't just completely the same person, because that would be really predictable. In the end of Yes Get Shadowy, Venomous said Shadowy we were dealt with, and KO thinks there might be some good in him. However, in Cal, KO realises Venomous was only using him, and that anger causes the elevator to come up with an unhappy TKO inside. TKO ends up taking back control and goes to Boxmore to find Shadowy Venomous, a compromise between the two. The idea of Shadowy Venomous is a foil. Here how KO and TKO could have ended up. TKO teams up with Shadowy Venomous, which is weird at first because of how much TKO hated Shadowy in TKO's house, but he wants freedom. There is nowhere to go and everyone else would try and bring KO back. This used to the two both terrorise everywhere. In Dendi's video channel, a yard the damage is shown, but there isn't much TKO stuff of interest in that episode. But so we'll just get to the penultimate episode, Yet's Fight to the End. Rather than Edith join the tournament trying to stop TKO, and despite their efforts, he wins. Since it is the number episodes, there is your reformed villains, but this does it better. Last episode, we had the Boxmore bots. Think gave Rather than Edith turbo powers, Boxman returns to try to fight off TKO with the bot, and the venomous half is somewhat redeemed. The only character who stayed with Vayne is Shadowy, and while for some, this isn't a permanent change, judging by the next episode and all you executed well, it feels a bit overboard. However, TKO's redemption works. He kills everyone in the piazza drum a happy song sung by Carol, which is a memory of how to calm down. It will foreshadow back in season one with TKO's opening flashback, which goes to show how well thought out this show is. Kyo and TKO realize they are actually the same, with them stating it was that easy and it took them long enough. Shadowy figure directly told them that TKO had to come from somewhere. They fused together, which is the only satisfying way the storyline could end. KO couldn't banish him again because he is part of him, and it's a metaphor for accepting part of yourself. In KO's case, it's angry edgy aside. The show only has one more episode, so you don't get to see him act differently, but he has a two-fake TKO. After winning the tournament, KO gets a wish from the President of the Universe, which is everyone gets to give their best life. I love the face of this yarn so much because it doesn't mean everything is peaceful and no conflict, because that is not what a best life is. Normally wishes in media are flawed and get twisted. The show did that in a previous episode, but it is so expertly chosen here. The story was very interesting, the introduction set it up well and the turn TK rule really changes things was ended in an amazing way with them fusing and KO's wish. This isn't even the best overacting story in OKO yet be heroes. I prefer the point stuff in season 2, especially AD's role. This was just a good place to start and I really hope this does well enough for me to make many more videos on this show. In conclusion, this was my first time analysing an arc or storyline where I break down the events of three seasons. I might do more like this for other shows. As for OKO, okay, I have at least one more plan, there's a lot I could discuss say like, the characters. I wish season 3 was extended to be the end for the first two seasons, but honestly the show couldn't be really last young. The actual last episode is really amazing for how it tied the fourth wall to growing up in an extraordinary way. There is multiple metaphoric lenses to see the show because of how gay it is. KTO is really enjoyable because it can be fun and also serious at its normal style. I think it deserves to be remembered as the masterpiece and underrated show that it is. The End